As a teenager in the 1980s, I was absolutely obsessed by digital watches. I couldn't walk past a jeweler's shop window without stopping to take a look to see what new models they got on display. And it seemed like there was always something new coming out. You could check your pulse, the temperature, the altitude, play a game, or listen to the radio, or even perhaps watch the television. But by far the most popular gadget that was on a digital watch at the time was a calculator. Now, 30 years later, I'm sure there are quite a few people out there who are thinking, well, what was it that we needed to calculate all the time in the 80s, where we had to walk around with a calculator on our wrist? Well, most people didn't actually use a calculator all that much. It's just they didn't cost an awful lot of money either. So it was a way of getting a digital watch with everything on it at a reasonable price. So you had a calculator if you needed it, but of course you had an alarm, a stopwatch, countdown timer, all those kind of things. So they were quite popular. In fact, I'd say they were actually a little bit fashionable. Now, when I got my first calculator watch, it was 1984. I'd already had a number of other digital watches before then that played tunes and things. But the reason I picked this particular model was because of the technology in it. At first glance, it just looked like a normal digital watch. But when you pressed a button, the buttons for the calculator appeared overlaid inside the glass and you operated them by tapping on the glass because it had an early capacitive touchscreen. The kind of thing you take for granted nowadays in a smartphone, but for 1984, this was the height of technology and Casio didn't stop there. Only a short while later, they brought out this watch, which looks like a normal analog slash digital watch, but it actually has handwriting recognition built into it. You could draw on the screen the numbers and those are entered into the calculator. It's amazing the technology that they were coming up with at the time. And I know in the 80s, I was thinking that this was just going to carry on like this forever and watches were going to get better and better. But as it was, things pretty much tapped out with data bank watches and didn't seem to go any further. And then people started migrating back to using good old analog watches again. So in a way, that's perhaps the end of that chapter. But let's take things right back to the very beginning in the first mass produced digital watch, which was the Pulsar P2. It came out in 1973, just in time to be featured in the James Bond film Live and Let Die. And there's a reason why James Bond might be wearing one of these. At the time, the Pulsar P2 actually cost more than a Rolex Submariner. Now, things advanced rapidly. It was only two years after that, 1975, when Pulsar introduced the very first calculator watch. Now, that's something that's often attributed to the watch I'm going to show you here in this video, the Hewlett Packard HP01. That definitely isn't the first calculator watch. It's probably the second. It came out two years after the Pulsar in 1977. It was available in two different models, the silver one, for $650 or the gold coloured one for $750. That's a heck of a lot of money for 1977. And just like the Pulsar watch before it, the Hewlett Packard HP01 used an LED display. Now, whilst these are lovely and sharp and could be seen in the dark, the big disadvantage an LED display has is that it eats through batteries. For that reason, it's only normally shown for a couple of seconds at a time when you press a button. This watch uses three batteries. Two of those are just for driving that display, and it will get through those two batteries in a approximately three to six months. By the time the HP01 made it to market in 1977, there were already watches available that used the much more power efficient LCD display technology. And by 1978, Seiko had a LCD calculator watch on sale, which meant that by then the HP01 was looking a little bit out of date. Now, I still remember the first time I saw a calculator watch in a shop window. It was this model here, the Seiko C359, and that was in 1979. Let's compare that with 1977's HP01. So in just a couple of years, it's easy to see how quickly the technology has advanced. We've gone from a LED display that you have to press a button to show to an always on LCD display. We've gone from a really quite thick watch to one that's just a normal thickness, perhaps half as thick as the HP01. It's also a lot lighter. The HP01 was criticized at the time for being a heavy watch, whereas the Seiko, it's less than half that weight and the price of the Seiko was perhaps about a quarter of the price of the HP01 when it came out so it's easy to see the market for the HP01 had been eroded almost as soon as the thing appeared on the market. It's been estimated they only sold 10,000 of these and a good proportion of that number will have gone to employees because when they stopped making them they sold them off to staff at $100 a piece. 
ironically, the things that made the HPO one a failure back in 1977 now make it a highly desirable and collectible watch. You see, whilst people will have paid a heck of a lot of money for it, and it was very well made, they might have found it a little bit bulky and heavy to wear every day, and the LED display kept wearing down those batteries, so they got a bit fed up with it, put it in its box and shoved it away in a drawer somewhere. Now, almost 40 years later, people are inheriting these devices, finding they've got a pristine watch from 1977, and they're able to sell it on to people like me that can appreciate something like this for what it is. Now, if you've never seen an HPO one before, the first time you look at a picture of one, you might think there's something a little bit wrong with the keyboard. Perhaps it's got broken. All the buttons seem to be at different heights. Well, it's supposed to be like that. There's three different kinds of buttons. Across the bottom row, you can see D, A, M and T. Those are all raised up so that you can press them easily with a finger. Now, the majority of the rest of the buttons are sunken down inside so that you can't press them, except on the top row, in the corners, we've got R and S, and those can be pressed by a finger, but you have to push down a little bit harder because they are sunken down but they're also inside a little bit of a hollowed out bowl. So the buttons you can press with your finger are D to display the date, A will show the alarm time, if you press the T at the bottom right that's the current time, and if you press the M that brings up a memory, you could perhaps put a number in there that you need to recall at a later date. So you can't press the ones in the middle but you can press those top two, if you press the S it brings up the stopwatch, press it again to start the stopwatch. They've got that recess so that you don't press it by accident, you see when you've got the stopwatch on the display remains on and therefore that will burn through the battery. So that's why those ones are recessed and of course are to reset. So the most common key that you're going to be pressing is that T at the bottom right to bring the time up, which is shown for about a second or so. Now, if you want to press any of those buttons in the middle, you're going to need something to press them with. Handily, it's in the watch itself. In the band, they supply a stylus. It's metal with a plastic tip. You don't want to be pressing these with a pen because you're going to mess them up. So they supply that little stylus and that enables you to press those recessed buttons and uh, operate the calculator functions as well as a lot of other things. Then once you're done with it, you just put that back inside the wrist strap itself and it clicks into position. Now I'll show you the things that came with my watch. I've got a cardboard box and inside that there's a nice watch box although it's disintegrating now I think it's covered in some sort of leather type stuff which is falling off due to old age inside here isn't much what should be in here other than those two little bits of the strap that I've taken out is an instruction booklet and a stylus type pen across the back there for pushing those buttons on the watch itself in fact I'll show you one that was recently sold on eBay which has got everything with it you can see we've got a quick start guide there little thing with batteries in it also very important there's a instruction booklet but notice that one sold for 2152 pounds because it was absolutely mint it was like new it was also in the steel color which seems to be the rarer of the two even though it was the cheaper of the two back in the day i actually prefer the look of the silver over the gold and that's the one i really would have wanted to get but i had to find one at a price i could afford and it took me well over a year to find this particular one now, there have been some that I've seen sold quite cheaply, but are really battered up. This one might not have come with all the accessories. It might not be the silver colour I prefer. However, it is absolutely mint. There are no scratches on the display or on the keyboard anywhere. Of course, some of these can get pretty beaten up, given the size of the thing, if people have used them a lot. Now, that keyboard... There's a lot going on there, isn't there? You really do need the instruction booklet to understand how to use this watch. Now, I've used dozens of watches over the years and I can always set them and go through all the features without even resorting to the manual. This isn't one of those watches. This watch you do need the manual because it does things unlike any other digital watch that I've ever used. In fact let me talk you through some of the features of this watch just to give you an idea. Pressing T of course brings up the time. Pressing triangle and dot changes it from 24 hour to 12 hour mode. You'd never have figured that out otherwise. Now, of course, D brings up the date, but notice on the right-hand side, there's a full stop or a dot at the right. That means it's a 21st century. I've also got the date swapped around to the UK style of having the day, then the month. You can have it the other way around as well. Now, if we set the alarm, say, for 9.30 in the morning, you just type it in like uh, as a full time with a colon in the middle of it. And I'll put it 9.30 in 24 seconds. Now, if you press triangle and A, that stores it as the alarm. The dash at the right-hand side means that the alarm is on. Now, if we do colon, one, triangle, S, that starts a one-minute countdown. So we're not going to wait for the end of that, but you can type whatever you want in there as a countdown. 
Right, let's do some sums here. So if we do 852 by 23% equals, there you go. So that's a normal sort of calculator type function that you should get. The calculator's live as soon as you start typing on the digits on the watch. Now it brings back that number. It hasn't gone away just because the display's gone blank. It's stored in the background. It's just the display blanks out to save power. So you can carry on with your calculation and it will just come back on with the last information that was on there. Now, if you go into the 1976 patent or patent um, it goes on an awful lot about the things this watch can do that earlier calculator watches can't you see what they were doing here was something that no one had done before it was not just a watch with a calculator mode it was a watch where the calculator was combined with the watch it could do computations using time now if that sounds a bit complicated i think i better demonstrate some time-based computation so we'll bring up the time and let's say we want to know what the time is in 7 hours and 45 minutes. So we type that in. What's the time? 7 hours 45. The answer is 10.47. Right, so that's a simple thing there. Now, say I'm some sort of traveller and I'm going from the UK. I'm going over to New York. So that's five hours in the past. So it's 3.03 .03 in the afternoon here. So I'm going over to New York. I do minus five hours. Triangle. Set that as a time by pressing T. Right, now I'm on New York time. 10 in the morning. So then I fly back again on the Concorde or whatever it would have been back in the day. So I press plus five hours, triangle T. There we go, back to the original time again. The triangle is like a bit of an enter key on this thing. Right, let's do a calculation involving getting the mean average of three times. So I put the first time in 123 hours and 10 minutes. And then we'll add the second time in, 321 hours and 34 minutes. And then the final time... Let's just put something 67 hours and 21 minutes. Right, so we've got three numbers in there. Divide that by three. So now we've got the mean average of those three times, which is 170.69. But we want that to display in minutes rather than decimal time. So to do that, we press R to recall the number. Triangle and equals, that's now in minutes. So 170 hours and 41 minutes is the mean average. But if we want to go back to decimals, do triangle and uh, divide 170 hours 0.68. Right, for this one, let's use the stopwatch. This is a proper dynamic calculation. We've started the stopwatch and let's pretend I'm some highly paid consultant. And I'm paid a rate of £123.32 per hour. So we multiply that by the stopwatch and we can see an ongoing tally of how much I'm making each second. You can see there it's counting up every second. Now if we want to go back to the stopwatch to see how much time has elapsed, we just press the S so we can see there we're getting on for 30 seconds now and then we can go back to the monetary amount and I've already made £1.16p. That's not bad going is it? Now this watch was aimed at people that were making considerable amounts of money like that. In the manual, there's example calculations you can try out. And look at this one. Suppose you are in your airplane traveling at 140 miles per hour, and it gives you a calculation you can try to figure out how long it's going to take to get to your destination. But notice it says your airplane, not an airplane, but your airplane. Also, there's a road rally here. Sports car enthusiasts will appreciate the HP01, and you can understand that. You've got a timer and a calculator all in one. It can work out how long you're doing on your laps and things. Anyway, let's come back down to Earth a little bit. We'll just figure out the amount of days between two dates using the perpetual calendar function. So we put the 3rd of April 89 in there. We'll do minus the 21st of July 1978. So how many days between those two dates? The answer is 3,909. And one last calculation using the perpetual calendar. Let's try and figure out what day of the week Christmas Day was in 1979. So we put that date in there and then press triangle and colon, and it answers number two. Now, two is Tuesday, one being Monday. So it's a Tuesday, Christmas Day, 1979. So now you know, but as well as all those party tricks, this was and is a very accurate digital watch. According to the manual, the accuracy is within 30 seconds per year. Compare that to a Casio digital watch you might buy in a shop nowadays. That will say in the manual that it does plus or minus 30 seconds a month. Also, notice at the bottom here, it can operate in a magnetic field up to 60 gauze without adverse effects. Something perhaps for the scientists or astronauts that I'm not too sure. 
I've heard it said that the HPO one could be considered to be the first smartwatch. So when you take that into consideration, that six month battery life, which was once considered unacceptably short, now compares very favorably with modern smartwatches, most of which need charging daily. That LED display that was out of date in 1978 is now gloriously retro. Now pressing a button to display the current time is now acceptable again. It seems what was once old is now new again. And for me, the HPO one was and still is the ultimate calculator watch. And when it comes to retro tech, this 40 year old watch really does know what time it is. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.